say any one of those ones? Uh, no, as a miscellaneous appeal, it does require, um, no, it's not a miscellaneous appeal. It has to be reviewed under the special exception. What's that? It was called out as a miscellaneous appeal on the sheet. Yeah, it, it is, uh, which was favorable. Uh, beyond that, it, it's your basic standard non-conforming use, uh, existing use in a in a uh, an RF zone, which they're now expanding by adding buildings and additions to buildings, and so it's up to the board to review it as a miscellaneous appeal expansion or not. Yes, could you elaborate? Just given the, the rhetoric around uh, ranges that we've heard from cable, this is a good amount of account. Could you elaborate on what we provide the services to the police department and how everything works there? Sure. I, I also have uh, Bob Tanner with me tonight, also, who's my chief range safety officer. So if I miss something, I'm sure he'll, he'll bring it to me. Uh, first of all, uh, We've been a very popular club in the last, I'm going to say, five years. Our membership has grown to over a thousand in the club. Uh, with that said, on any given weekend, approximately 200, 250 could be present on the grounds. Okay. Uh, we offer shooting venues in a wide variety. We have competition pistol. We have sporting plays. Uh, sporting plays is a shotgun sport, played a lot like golf, there's 14 to 18 stations, you walk around that big circle and instead of hitting the ball with a golf club, you uh, try to hit a little birdie with a shotgun. So, and we have trap, which is the, one of the uh, standards of, of the shotgun shooting world. We have uh, long range rifle. We have a 600 yard range at the facility, and that's dedicated for the long range rifles. Uh, we have IDPA, which stands for International Defense Pistol. Uh, that's the one that sometimes you see on TV and everything, where they shoot behind barrels and around corners and things like that. Uh, we have an indoor range that we shoot in the, in the wintertime in. Um, let's see, have I, have I got any one? He asked about the law enforcement. We have 44 agencies right. that train you. Yeah. We, we have agencies on the law enforcement that train. We have local, including Scarborough, obviously. Uh, we have county, the county sheriffs. We have state, state police. And we have federal. And we also have military that are training at the facility. How many acres is the property? 166. I don't think you've ever had a complaint, but I know. Not that we know of. Bob, you're longer than I am on that one. It's been a long time since we've had any guys complaints. Yeah. We, we would probably say, first of all, we, we have now, I want to say over 50, over 60 uh, range safety officers. Is that correct, Bob? Correct. Yeah. And so we man range safety officers every weekend during the summertime out at the facility. Uh, we're a very tight knit group when it comes to safety. Also, we've installed electronic gates to the facility. So you have a small form in order for you to get into our facility electronically. You will present that at the gate and obviously the gate will go up automatically if you pay your dues, by the way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> while you're at that gate, while you're at that gate, you're on TV. Uh, in the last three years, we, we take this very serious. We, 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 don't, we don't want to have any incidents whatsoever. Uh, we, have, we now have camera supervision on our utility ranges, so if you go there and you're a member and you're shooting, we've got record of you shooting and pictures of you shooting. Uh, so we do a lot of work with that. Uh, if you sign up to be a member in the club, if you just don't pay your dues and walk through the door, there's a, there's a very elaborate process that, that goes through for you to be checked out, including an interview process. Uh, you'll spend the full day with, with training with us, going over the policies and procedures that take place. 
that's probably why you don't hear a lot about us. Uh, we don't shoot till eight o'clock in the morning, and we're all done shooting at sunset. So, and is it, it's not open to the public. Just it, it, the only time it is open to the public is on a competition event. When and again, those most likely are going to be shooters from other organizations that are coming to Maine to shoot. When we have a sporting play event now, we will draw people from as far away as, as New York and, and some of the Canada that will come. But most everybody that shows up there is either going to be NRA certified or they're going to be a member of their own local club and coming to shoot at the club. And if, just, uh, if somebody wanted to join, would they contact them? If you go on the website, Scarborough Fishing Game, there's an application there that you would fill out. That application is sent in. Once that application is, is sent in, it goes before the membership panel. The membership panel would then assign a sponsor to you. That sponsor would team up with you. You would go to the range with the sponsor. The sponsor would, first of all, give you a tour of the facilities to show you the different sporting events that could you could participate in at the range. That sponsor would also take you to one of the utility ranges and observe you handling a firearm and shooting the firearm so that we know you're safe with what you're doing with that firearm. When that process is, is taken care of, you go to the next step in the process, which, which is to go to the interview itself. Uh, we have a panel and that panel changes depending upon who's available, but anywhere from three to four of the longer term members will interview you and ask you a, a set of questions that they ask everybody uh, to try to get an idea of, of how you would handle firearms, what you would do, how you would participate in the club more than just coming over and shooting a firearm and leaving. You know, we, we have, a, with 166 acres, we have a lot of work we do. We are a total volunteer club Nobody gets paid to do this. They, they are all volunteers from the president on down. So we have a, if you also, if you remember coming through the door for the first time, you're going to get a little card. We call it the green card. And that green card means you're going to do 16 hours of service to the club in order for you to be into your second year of membership. If you do not volunteer for 16 hours, you won't be a member the second year. Oh, that's good. I think that's interesting because most people won't, wouldn't even know it exists in Scarborough. Yeah. But uh, I want to come back to the appeal now. So um, I'm going to propose the questions first and then I'll go through the items because that's pretty straightforward. You, uh, you mentioned that you completed one building. Where is that fourth building there? The building that was completed in that, the right piece up. It's a sporting place, one. And it is located on the back side of the trail. Not showing on that one. Now that, that is a, I believe, a 24 by 24 garage. the one that was in that previous packet. Okay, so that would be this one. It would be, let me get my lip straight. So it would be, it's located right beside that one that I've circled okay. for you. Okay. That's so it's this one here. Is that circle? Yes, you got it right on the screen now. Yep. Place in it, we couldn't afford it at the time. 
designed the uh, facility for the septic system. And there should be a letter in your packet from the engineer that stated that uh, that system was designed that way so it would handle that. Okay, the only change I would make, just to put it on record, is that I, I believe the way it was stated is there would be no increase in water flow. But I, if you're going to be at one of the letters that came with it, it said the new project will allow preparation of hot dishes in, in the club's facility. Correct. And I think if that's the case, you'll probably be doing dishes on those serving. We do dishes now in there. Okay. Okay. We we do the dishwashing inside. Okay. It's the cooking that we don't have room for. But you might have a few more dishes with cooking, so there might be a slight impact to. We we, we is, we're, we're going to see impact, yeah. I believe, all the time. Okay. Yes. But it, it will yeah. be minimal compared to what it was designed for. So. Yeah. Just stay. Thank you. Yeah. Funding right now. You mentioned that uh, right now you you, you have. This. That is correct. We, we expect that they're just waiting is what they're doing. Because what had happened was we bumped into this inadvertently of coming down and getting the permit. And that's when we met with staff and staff said, I think we've got to redo this. So we were in the permit mode a couple months back here to start these buildings. Uh, the funding is there. The money is there. Uh, we're all set to go. I want to address the public inquiry from the public to speak on this issue. We've got to close the public part of this meeting. We'll come back to why we go through the standards. Um, what I'll do is I'll just read the standards and questions and you can respond. To, you know, these are pretty basic. Sure. Just uh, English. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Poetry use will not create unsanitary or unhelpful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water or other aspects of its design or operation. If you can elaborate a little bit, that's sort of the way I was mentioning that. The building septic system was designed to handle the flow that, that we intend to do. Um, with that said, we made sure that there was a copy in the application by the civil engineer so that you would know that it's just isn't us saying that. Uh, we did that to work with. Um, we have, we've never had septic problems there. So that's a sand soil, so it's, it works easy. Sand and sky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Except for where my farm is. But, but that's a different subject. He's a great clay. Yeah. Uh, those use will not create unsafe vehicular pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in this vicinity. Yeah. I, it, it won't, the, the storage garage of the kitchen won't have that effect. Uh, obviously, the traffic that we get comes into the range road, and why they are there is, is for the shooting events. Uh, the, the kitchen area obviously will, will work for those shooting events. Uh, I also had a letter by the uh, sporting place people just in case, because a while back I thought and wanted everybody to to understand, we, we don't want to be in the rental business. We have no intention of, of running weddings or anything like that. Ours is to support the shooting sports. And you'll see that the outline that we put together here, by the way, is a 10-year plan that we work with, with Maine Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, they do a long-range one, and I would have presented a couple of other buildings that along the way when the money gets there we, we intend to do. One is, is to do an expansion to our clubhouse. Our clubhouse right now can hold comfortably 50 people, maybe 60 people at the max, and then after that it's not comfortable. It deter deters us from putting on any type of a function where we would bring a guest speaker in of how to reload ammunition or the latest and greatest uh, designs or Cabela's or something like that that would come forward. And the reason we don't do those is because we, we couldn't house the people whatsoever. But that is three or four years out because we raise our money before we build. We're not in, interested in taking loans. Uh, I have a couple of other buildings that, that are there in that long range plan, but just want you to know that we don't do it pick and choose. We've, we've got a definite plan. We know where we're headed. And actually, the site package that you see in front of, front of you, that is the DEP 
plan. That is the DEB site package. So you look on that, you'll see other buildings. Some of those buildings today do not exist. Uh, the addition to the clubhouse is, is, is not, and that's our next project. Hopefully it's a big one. Uh, you'll also see one up in, in the uh, upper corner, which is, which is a shoot house dedicated to the law enforcement agencies, and that's something we hope that we can provide them, but obviously that will mean we'll have to get some uh, grants through the law enforcement agencies to build that for them. Um, I think we have one more garage storage area to go in rifle, and one more garage to go into <coughs> IDPA. Those are out there a ways. And now that we know that there's a six month window, you will only see us if we can do it within those six months windows. So neither of those storage garages or the kitchen addition, I believe, has any effect on traffic and, and no effect that I could see on traffic out in, in the public way. Now, Mr. Chair, may I have a fact the first question? Sure. Um, it was stated that they have an engineering design that supports the proposed use as the We have a lead reclaim program. Uh, we're one of the first ranges in the state of Maine to do that. As a matter of fact, oh, it's been about a month ago, we hosted for the Maine State Inland Fisheries and Game Association a workshop for all of the uh, uh, shooting ranges in the state of Maine, including law enforcement and the membership ranges throughout the state with uh, the process of going over how they can develop their lead mediation programs. Uh, we put together, and with the help of, of a lot of money, as they say, we have a trommel. A trommel is just a big bin, if, if anybody is who would be loose to, what could I compare it to? It's almost like the process you would do to sift loam and get the rocks and sticks out of the loam. We have a highly specialized one so that we can take the dirt from the shooting berms that they shoot into, put the dirt in one end of the one end of the machine, and off the other end of the machine comes separated dirt, separated lead. The lead is then processed and, and reclaimed through the salvage people. And we have a program that does that. Uh, Bob is actually in charge of that program. He manages the, the uh, process of doing that for two reasons. One, obviously, is the lead content that could be into the ground. The second one, obviously, is for us, it becomes a hazard if there's too much lead out. We get what we call tiddlywinks, where the bullet will hit and then it'll bounce off. So we have that there. We also have three monitoring wells on the site that we check each year to make sure that there's no lead content showing up in any of our groundwater. And, uh, We've been lead free now for uh, before I was there, I would say. So we, we have a fairly elaborate plan to uh, manage that lead. And that's, by the way, the reason that we partner up with DEP, because we are a range and they want us to be with them, and they monitor also that part of the process. Uh, those use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood. Or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Right. Well, at, as I go down through it, uh, projects will not affect the erosion, sediment, or water quality. Our entire campus is permitted with Maine DEP, and, and thus our, our uh, wastewater or uh, stormwater systems are all managed, and we have uh, filtration uh, filters, vegetation filters to trap any type of runoff water that we have that goes sideways on our property. Um, we have no sediment or erosion that would leave the property. As a matter of fact, we're, we're pretty erosion free. We, we've done a lot of work to make sure in the areas that we work in that, that we are. Uh, we channel our water through our only wetland, which is about the middle of the, of the, uh, of the property, and that passes through a bridge across our roadway. Uh, that's, that's that piece of the 
puzzle to see what else. We're not in we're not in local shoreland zoning. Okay, let me hold you right there for a second. I just want to keep you on on the uh, issue of public safety problems. Okay. Um, I'm assuming with the gating, that's another finding fact of gating. Mm -hmm. Is that have, have developed that you need to call law enforcement or? Yes, we have. Uh, we've had over over our end, I'm going to say two accidents that involving shooters that had personal accidents that we did call uh, 911 rescue for. Uh, they did an outstanding job, by the way. They're there in uh, three to four minutes. I mean, they were fast. Um, thank God it's never a major, hasn't been a major, hope it will never be a major, but it, it's, uh, we've had both uh, law enforcement and civilian have an accident, as they say. This, did, but you wouldn't have this. This would not increase that. No, it's not what you're doing. There's no effect on that. Not, not at all. Not at all. And the proposed use will not create. Uh, you've already answered this, I think. Uh, the proposed use will not uh, result in sedimentation or erosion, or have an adverse effect on the water supply. Cover that. Last thing. Uh, the project of trying to affect would be would be the lift. Any claim for that? Uh, projects will be compatible with existing use of the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Um, it's been around since what year? 1950. 1950, yeah. yeah. So and also, with what we're doing here with the DEP, we've reached our maximum usage of that land for the type of stuff we do. So. What you see on on that particular piece, once it's all built, we're built out. We, we can't do any more at that point in time without buying extra land. And so you're not in the shoreline zone, and no. you own the the, the, the uh, club owns the land. We own the property, and um, we have the technical financial ability to accomplish the task. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And. Hours of operation indicated um, that it's no earlier than eight. That's right. No shooting can occur before eight o'clock in the morning, and for our general membership, no shooting is allowed once sunset is down. Um, okay, I'll come back to the board with questions, comments. Well, I, I think you've done a very nice job laying this out for us and answering the necessary questions. So thank you very much for being prepared. Thank you. I would add one last thing because I want to make sure that we cover, cover. We did purchase a piece of land two years ago from the Cusack family, Beatrice Speedway. And the reason we did that was to place additional buffer between us and, and our property line. That, that's a non-shooting area, we call it. And all of our shooting, by the way, shoots into the middle of our property. In other words, we don't turn around and shoot out. That one we have a very, very small amount um, mortgage for. I believe at this point in time it's 20 or 15 by now. 15. 50. So, as wanted, I have all the facts, as I said. I appreciate that. Yep. So, why don't we start off with, uh, we'll go right back over these with the board findings of fact on uh, each item. And I'll just start down from the fact that it's still as I'll look at this right. Uh, the proposed use will not create unsanitary and healthy conditions by reason of sewage disposal emissions of air and water and other aspects of the design for operation. Yeah, I, think, I think the design of the property itself, from a noise standpoint, if that's an air emission, uh, it's designed to keep the noise on the property. It's got berms on the outside, you have buffer vegetation at the exterior of the property. Um, from a stray lead or ballistics, Standpoint, if they're shooting to the center, that's to keep it on property and not force it off property. If someone has a straight shot, I think that is uh, a finding effect as well. I think that and um, the design is engineered so that it supports the type of use that they've got. I agree with Mr. Loisel, and additionally, as he mentioned, the finding of fact that the initial design for the septic system that was put in was to account for a full-size kitchen apparatus. Um, so really, they're just construct you're constructing a facility just to meet the requirements of the septic system that you have in place that can handle it. Mr. Carpenter. Yeah, I would agree. I think the applicants told us they've done many things to prevent the erosion. As the engineer. So I, uh, I agree with that, but I 
almost like they have the history. The way that you guys have laid this out, and you have, your, have everything flowing in the center of the property, property uh, water-wise, uh, where you have the wetlands and everything can be filtered out. Uh, I think that's very responsible. Thank you. I, I agree with everybody. I have nothing to add, but nice job on the presentation on Echo Mr. Stocks. Thank you. Uh, I, the, 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 the lead reclamation is a big deal. I, as a fisherman, and the damage it does uh, in that side of the world. And I just have heard nothing but great uh, response over the years of what you guys have done. And I, I think that from an environmental point of view, I just think it's amazing. You know, the facility that you guys have really is that well managed. I didn't even know about the test balls or something that says the test balls. Um, so let's go to the next one. Is uh, proposed useful not grant the same vehicular pedestrian traffic conditions when I have the existing unseeable traffic. I'm not sure we need to go through that unless somebody tells the finding of fact. I think it's pretty straightforward. I think the only finding of fact that it has is that it's the proposed structures that you're putting on are not going to change the use of the property. It's not going to increase the volume of use on that property. So what we see today is what we have tomorrow. And they have to recognize the fact that they can't bring in larger groups like the Cabellas or something like that. They, they know what they're going to stop. They've yeah. already stated those to us, so they're limiting the traffic. And they just state that the property's gone maxed out yeah, with right. the proposed use they have. And I just have to say they're not going to be shot in the lanes or. The proposed use will not create uh, the public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those are, uh, created by existing uses in the neighborhood. Require substantially greater degree of municipal fire, police protection, and existing uses in the neighborhood. But I think they've proven that the use that they're using today is not going to change based on these structures. It's going to stay the same, and it should have an additional increase on the amount of use. Additionally, with having to keep Bob access to the facility and having right. uh, closed circuit television monitoring all the different uh, all the different shooting sites, that's great. It's surprising how the TV settles everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree. Yeah, you have to said they, if someone's shooting, they're being recorded, and yeah. it's very limited access, and, and everything's going towards the center. So, I would agree. Yeah, I'm not even going to add to that one. I, I think uh, yeah, it, it's result explanatory. Yeah, I'm very impressed. I, I didn't know all that went into it. Proposed use of the not result in sedimentation of roads and have an adverse effect on water supplies. But I think finding a fact is that they have a uh, collection on site, they have a detention pond uh, for sediment to settle out, and they have vegetation to filter. It's well designed, so. In addition to um, physical size, as well as far as the structures being constructed, all the structures on the property are a single story. That's spelled out of here. That is correct. Um, and these storage um, um, structures won't be any taller than those, so no, there's no discernible impact to, to the existing neighborhood. And the yeah, can also mentioned that they're working with the DEP, and the DEP is doing on site for them, so I think that's very closely monitored as well. And as was stated earlier, uh, nothing flows off of the property at all. Same place you want. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. It really isn't changing. Um, so I'm not sure there's anything we need there unless it's even stated. Well, I would just follow the fact that they recognized that they needed additional buffer and they went and purchased that piece of land to get that additional buffer. And it's not in the shoreline zone. Uh, you own the property, uh, you have the financial ability, technical ability, and uh, <coughs> the proceeds will be compatible with existing use in the neighborhood with respect to generation of noise and house cooperation. Uh, and they stated eight to, uh, to dusk, yes. and that fits within the use of an RF zone. So. Now, is there ever been any problem with the dusk group? Because, I mean, obviously it gets darker later in the summertime, you've never run into anything with that? I was, I was careful. I, I don't want to mix the two up, but there are some times where the law enforcement agencies have to do a training, and they would be the only ones allowed to shoot after dusk. So, Bob, do you want to? 
He's the guy that runs that, so I, I don't want to miss both. Well, speak the trap during the winter. And they have the only lighted range. We our rules. Every day for that. The lighted range. Trap is the only lighted range, uh, and they will shoot right. so, If you could just say that, no matter Yes. Uh, thank you, Bob. Uh, trap does run a winter league, and the winter league runs from four o'clock to seven o'clock in the evening on Thursday night. And they've done that for I don't know how long. As long as I've been. As long as we've been there. And yeah. so that's the only time you would hear something shot after after an hour minus Ellie. But that doesn't change my opinion of being done in the winter. Yeah. I'm fine with that. No, no, seven. Yeah. Yeah, but not, not too much. Uh, just one question that isn't tied to these, but just for clarification. As far as uh, Accessible. Absolutely. Uh, we have shooters that are in the wheelchairs that shoot pistol, trap, sporting clays. IDPA, Paul? Yes. IDPA, uh, rifle, international defense pistol. That's the one that's going to be behind the barrel in the wheelchair. Uh, did I leave anybody out? Competition pistol. We designed all our ranges. Every, every piece is designed for that. Every time we do something now, it is ADA. And I, I, I got to forgive myself, but one thing I didn't mention is we are now starting, and, and we've had the last couple of years, very strong youth program is starting up. Uh, we have the Boy Scouts there. Uh, we sponsor a couple of the Olympic, uh, Junior Olympic shooters. As a matter of fact, I think one of the young gentlemen was in the front page of the paper. Uh, Bob, you know that name? No, no. No, okay. But we, we've really started to go strong because uh, Bob's getting old. No, he's old, but he's getting old. <laughs> so, so we want to make sure that in the next generation, this is here for the people that they have. So. Did you also have one of the high school? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember her name. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so, so, so bad. Erica. Right. Yeah. And she. Oh, sure. Yeah. In fact, are you? Can I brag? If you'd like to get up. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. The door yeah. Is. <laughs> I used just came back from Fort Benning for international competition. And uh, our team, out of a possible of 600, shot 595. They were only beat by uh, people shooting scores of 600, uh, and they were like the fifth and sixth people uh, competing against uh, Italy, Chile, Brazil, uh, and there were a lot of uh, coaches there from uh, colleges that were very interested in our uh, youth that were shooting and how we're developing our program, and we asked for advice from them, and they said, continue what you're doing and they'll be ready for us. We in fact have two students leaving this year, one for Tennessee and one from uh, to uh, Kentucky uh, on the full scholarship, uh, both of them on full shooting scholarships. And uh, so our youth program is, uh, is a very well developed and uh, it's becoming very well recognized around the nation. So congratulations. we had five uh, gold medals on the state championship last year, out of six. So do I have a, based on this, do I have a motion? Uh, I make a motion to approve the field 2550. Second. Special motion. Thank you. Thanks for your patience. Thank you.
this all uh, drives, this is not R50, parcel 24C. And um, I'm just going to go back on this for those that don't know. Uh, and the Spanish owned that property was originally, I think, in a part of the RF zone. And then it was changed over when Heidi's Parkway came into the P zone. And they were residential, and there's a living residence in that area. And so technically they became non conforming because of a, of a change in use to that district. Am I summarizing that properly? You should what? So, uh, okay. Good evening. Walter Wilson from the Design Company. I'm, rep uh, <coughs> I'm representing the scams of this proposal located at 39 Eagles High Drive. Like Mark was saying, the existing residential home was built in 1998. The property was IRF. It was now in the P. And as a result, uh, the home that they have built is now a home of use. In order to enlarge the existing home and appeal to the zoning board for expansion of the non conforming use and conversion to another non conforming use, under Section 3F will be required. As indicated in Section 5B4, the ordinance of the request for expansion of non conforming use is also a miscellaneous appeal. This requires review under Section 3F and requires approval from the zoning board. Also, under Section BC5, uh, states that miscellaneous appeal has to go in front of the planning board for their review, and that took place on June 22nd. I probably believe you have a letter from that in your packet. And uh, so now we're here tonight to go over this uh, re application of a previously approved thing. And it was all ready to go after the last approval. Health conditions kind of postponed everything. And after the uh, uh, going through the health problems, they took a second look at what was approved previously. And we had to add a few little changes to it, a couple handicap ramps going into the existing building, uh, as well as the one that was going into the, to the addition. And uh, that last appeal was approved under a accessory use expansion. Uh, we're coming back tonight with an expansion of a non-conforming use and a change of a non-conforming use from a single family to a two-family home. Uh, one of the reasons for that in particular was that a few restrictions that were put on as a miscellaneous, as a accessory use uh, don't conform to the wishes of what, how the place is going to be run in the future. Uh, currently, there's going to be the mother-in-law occupying the addition of the, of the uh, second unit. Uh, with the medical uh, problems in the house, uh, they're looking long-term that they may end up themselves living in the second unit and the uh, family members are, uh, residing in the other part of the house. And the big problem they had with accessory use is only two people could live in that second unit. They're looking forward to maybe having in-home nursing care and so forth, and maybe more than two people. So they're reapplying an expansion of non conforming use. They changed from a single family to a duplex uh, use under the uh, uh, section of non conforming use expansion. Uh, the proposed project will result in expansion of the non conforming residential use and the conversion of a one family home into another non conforming use, that being the duplex building. The basis for that is section three, paragraph five. The existing residential use of 2,368 square feet will be expanded to 2,886 square feet, and the additional unit will contain 1,156 square feet. The property is 3.99 acres in size. The finished product, project will totally have a lot coverage of 4,588, which includes both residential uses, porches, decks, carport, and access ramps. Uh, so the proposed building will occupy 2.7% of the property. And that's basically it in a nutshell. No, uh, Walt actually stated it very well. Uh, our zone allows for two families. So it's a, it's a it's a permitted use in the R zone. So if this had remained in the R F zone, it wouldn't be eligible for three family, but it would be eligible for two family. And I bring that up strictly because um, the change in use was forced on that. It's only
changed the types of factors and they were there. And of course that's the way you use, but realistically, if this was still on our zone property, they would not need to come forward to us. So I just bring that up for that, that point. Um I start off questions from the board and we'll open the public hearing debate from the public versus speaking the site. It's an interesting story for you that don't oh, know the scammers run off the grid. They're pretty amazing, actually. But they've, done some, they've been off the grid. Such a big boat, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty pretty impressive. I don't know once I know them. <laughs> and, and it's a beautiful one. So I just, it's just one of those little sidebars. That, uh, uh, are they staying off the grid? Or they uh, I think they're going to have to look at getting back on the grid because of the uh, requirements of some of the medical machines and so forth. Be there that they, they're thinking long term wise, it may be better to get back on the grid to guarantee they have uh, capability. Okay. Sorry, I had an echo. Okay, so now we jump right into the uh, uh, chairman of the room. I do have one question. Sure. I just want to confirm that this uh, 20, per, uh, 20 foot step back will be closest to the step back. Is that correct? Uh, that would be the corner of the gap. Yes, that is the closest. That's the corner of the deck in the building. It's a 25 foot setback. Um, Boat use will not create unsanitary and unhelpful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, which is the air or water, or other aspects of its design. I'll we'll just go right through these. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, why don't we go right through the uh, standard? We'll okay. start off with number one, uh, 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 A. The boat use will not create unsanitary and unhelpful conditions by reason of sewage disposal emissions to the air or water or other aspects of its design or operation. Uh, see, the expansion of the resident will not create any sanitary and health conditions. The on-site sewer disposal system will be inspected and needed to improve to satisfy the <coughs> uh, I believe that was looked at and I think there's going to be a little less than 10% of the extension on the reach field, which will take place and be submitted when we get the building permit. And that has to be controlled by this code. Uh, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Now, Ingleside Drive is a private road that connects to Two Rod Road. The Scammon residence also has a driveway that connects to Hagas Parkway. The proposed expansion on you will, use will not create unsafe conditions when added to the existing or foreseeable traffic in the vicinity. Okay. The proposed use will not create uh, public safety problems which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood, requiring substantial greater degree of municipal fire or police protection in existing uses in the neighborhood. Uh, this residential, residential expansion will not create any substantially different public safety problems in the neighborhood and will not require a greater degree of municipal fire or police protection. And the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion, have other adverse effects on water supplies. Well, the construction practices during the uh, uh, the work will be implemented to, pro to control erosion and runoff during the expansion until the finished grade is completed. And I don't see any problem with the, with the runoff at all. The way it's going to be controlled. We ran next to one of the ponds, uh, but that's going to be all silt fence controlled. Uh, so it won't be affecting any runoff in the pond. Those uses will be compatible with just uses in the input with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity other structures and density of development. Uh, the residence is located approximately 300 feet away from the Hagas Pathway in the <coughs> area. The house is located on a border because the land is barely visible from the Hagas Pathway. So we will not be the impact there. Yeah, it's not in the show on that. No, it's not. And they own the property and uh, the financial needs. Yes, since 1980, 1998, uh, there's no problem. And the uh, proposed use of the with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to generation of noise and house operation. It's just on. Yeah. Um, e, uh, e is interesting. Uh, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity, and use proximity of the structures. It's been forced on. So, although that may not be a perfect fit, uh, certainly the scammers didn't create that situation. So, it's. it's 
Uh, I think it meets that definition, but uh, we'll find that guy to you. I think that, that last one also is with respect to generation and noise and hours of operation. So there's not going to be any impact on that whatsoever. So why don't we come to the um, board with any uh, findings of fact on any of these items, and we'll start down with Mr. Richard. Uh, we'll start off with just, and, and it can be anybody who wants to jump in. We're not going to go through each one of these. I don't think there's a need. Uh, but if you have any findings of fact you'd like to add regarding this group or not. Walters answered those sufficiently. Well, it's going to make perfectly good sense to me. Uh, I, I certainly don't see how it can possibly create any additional, well, much additional uh, vehicular traffic uh, on the B there. Uh, first off, they're expanding just a small amount, and uh, maybe one more car possibly per day, according to that. It's so minimal, I don't think we're going to count it. Don't see any issues with any of So we're not going down. We won't be unless you want to pick one. You, you pick any or all. It's fine. Mm -hmm. I just figured mm -hmm. it would be No, I think, I think it's good that you stated that this is something that was kind of forced on them. They're kind of in the middle of something that they didn't plan on being in the middle of. But unfortunately, the regulations are what they are. So they didn't come for us to go through. And it didn't make sense at the time. I remember it going through this. Says it's time to carp it out. And that was one of the debates I think because carp it, they didn't do that for whatever reason. In other words, keep it as an honor of zone at a lesser case. Yeah, it's a small question. I'm satisfied with the explanation that Mr. Wilson provided. I don't have any concerns. Uh, anyway, I may think a finding fact is that the Sewage system is being properly sized by the engineering group to uh, cover the additional uh, occupancy that's going to be going on in the structure. On B, I think there's no significant change to the volume of traffic that goes down those roads now. They're following under D, they're following the proper uh, sediment control for during construction, and then they're going to be um, finished grading, so they'll have grass or some type of vegetation on top of this, so it's not going to have any additional. Uh, road potential under D. That was all I had. What, what type of fence did you say it was that was preventing? Silk fence. Silk fence. Silk fence, yeah. Silk rotation control. Because that's because it's next to the pond. Yes, that's where you disturb the earth and ground, you don't want to run off to do a rainstorm or whatever. You want to the properties put those up to control. Well, this just ties back to. Uh, Well, those man-made ponds, those are created, yes. so they don't require any 100 feet setbacks or anything. They're all man-made ponds. So they don't require the setbacks. So that's correct. I just want to make sure about that. But what is this, What is the distance from the ponds? Just for sake of question, you know? The distance from where? From the pond building. And you know what it is? Well, the closest one's about, uh, it shows on the, uh, who the building is. Uh, this one right in here, from the building out to the pond, Relative, like 45 feet to the back of the pond. Just finding back here would be that that's irrelevant because, in fact, they were in the pond and they're not required to meet the same standards as a enclosure uh, main pond, for lack of a better term. Um, so it doesn't have that same standard. Yeah. Oh, really? I'm so the area of the pond doesn't qualify as a. Sure. And you've stated that this is a medical need now as to why it needed to be changed from the original. It's, yes, it's changed their mind as to how they want this done. Um, and also, we have to put some ramps in which weren't in there before. And uh, uh, the only change on the second unit, we had to make a small entryway change, I think, to amount to about 60 or 70 square feet larger than what it was before when we came in from the wood. Uh, so, there's very little change from the structure itself primarily has to do with the access ramp and the porch way to the existing house because the relative ended up off the ground about four and a half feet. We're going to get a ramp way up there with a set of stairs and uh, keep it covered across so it's, it's easier to get in and out of. And so we'll put the porch over, a roof over that porch, which was not there before. Uh, the building sizes, the structural sizes, like I said, almost exactly like the way we came through last time. 
and I think another funny effect that you said was basically that they're accommodating for having the possibility of having a living professional have to come in there. That's possibly, why they're looking at the future. Yeah, that's yeah, a possibility. possibility. Okay. Okay. Any other funny stuff? So we have a motion. A couple more questions. Move to approve uh, 2551 as proposed. Second. So we discussion on motion.
it, it does require uh, an emergency escape rescue opening of 5.7 square feet in that clear opening. The window well that he's talking about will provide that. It is code compliant. It does give them that emergency escape. Um, I'm actually not 100% certain that that is a setback issue because it's below grade, essentially. But it's not something that I, I wanted to complicate the request. Well, by I wanted to make sure we asked for it now yeah. instead of finding out what you're I, I think it's later. I think it's a good discussion topic for the uh -huh. board if they if they feel like if it is or it isn't, maybe it's okay. a good chance to weigh in. I do appreciate the fact that you're you're dealing with it rather than waiting for it to become an issue because I really don't know how that should be viewed. It's a subsurface structure and therefore it doesn't have like a plastic dome. It does dome have a little plastic dome over it, but um, yeah, I, I guess I think if you really wanted to adhere to the you know a letter of law, it probably it does qualify as a structure. It is permitted, so therefore it probably does require um, some some relief in order to exist in the setback. Uh, how how um, how it impacts any any neighboring properties or any other thing, I don't really know. <laughs> by that, but um, certainly it's something that we have to be dealt with at some point. Um, I think the other thing that Kevin mentioned um, is that the, the dormer issue on the uh, on the front of the house. Uh, we do have a, a standard or an allowance in the ordinance that you can add dormers as long as they're a setback with one foot from the from the uh, E line and or excuse me from the building line. And uh, a foot from each end, and don't don't exceed the, the, uh, uh, the distance of the ridge. Unfortunately, it doesn't really qualify because they're already vertically expanding the structure. So it's sort of a moot point, if you will. But so they vertically point. expanded the structure, but look to that existing. You were following that shape, the shape of the dormers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, so it's sort of a, it's an interesting point that they're, they're, they're sort of following that, but yet they're still asking for relief vertically. Uh, raise that roof up on the non-conforming portion. Um, everything else, um, I think, is, is pretty much as he's presented it. I don't see um, anything else that I need to bring to your attention. I guess. It seems like it's sort of well-documented files. Thank you. That makes a lot of easier for us. I would point the, the board's attention to the, to the one that's on the screen. You have that page in front of you as well. But that's a good way to sort of look at the existing versus the proposed in the, the various views. So amazing thing that architects can do. It's like a 3D puzzle, and I've got to figure out the size and shape of all the pieces. Okay, why don't uh, we ask the board any questions uh, to start with from the board? I'll open uh, over here. Over here.
question is that snow removal really is on the other side. Yeah. So um, I think it's a good, I'm glad that they got a call. I think it's great. But from a practical point of view, I, I don't see how that would be related to the revenue. Because the parking in the driveway is not moving. It's going to be where it is now. That's right. And substantially so. It may shift a little bit left or right, but it's going to be on that corner of the lot. And it's not going to the other side of the house. It, it's not going to the other side of the house. That's right. It will uh, ideally no longer cross the path. Yeah. the concern was height, just height in general. Should yeah, it's basically it's just a snow or that is approximately. Yeah. Uh, and there's, uh, they're well within the, the height restriction. So, yeah. So, um, this is a uh, practical difficulty here. And so, we're going through the a little bit harder standards than most. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I think the, the need for variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property, not to the general conditions in the neighborhood. And you could do either and, and explain that as opposed to saying yes. Yeah. Uh, so the house uh, right now exists pretty much how it was built in 1957. Uh, you know, maybe there was some paint or fixtures changed, but um, you know, so this house was in place before the current zoning and the current setbacks. Um, the way the house was built, the roof is a truss structural system and it's a low pitch. So with the low pitch, there's not enough room for us, not enough head room for us to create space under the existing roof. And because it's a truss, it can't be easily modified. Um, you know, so we have to rebuild the whole roof to, to create that space there. The next is granting the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use or fair market value of budding properties. So I've, I've included some photos in the package of neighboring houses, which are mostly this uh, cave. There's some that are full two stories or sort of story and a half high posted cave. The house immediately to the right that the driveway shared with is, is two stories. So this change will actually bring the house more in scale with the neighborhood. There are no other ranch houses uh, in that neighborhood. Um, and additionally, uh, we're removing a deck on what would be the right side of the house, wood frame deck that sits in the setback um, on the side of the property where the neighbor's garage is you know, essentially right on the property line. So we- Is that the east elevation? Yeah. So you want like a deck slash Yep, so that, that deck gets removed. So that you know, sort of brings our structure further so away from what it is. Right now. And the um, practical difficulty is not a result of an action taken by the African prior on. Uh, the, yeah, the house is uh, essentially as it was constructed in 1957. Um, you know, it's, it hasn't been changed much since then. One of the feasible alternatives available to the African acceptable areas? Well, with the, it's a small house on a small lot, so our coverage, our lot coverage would preclude us from expanding outward. Um, and if you look at the, the site plan, you can see how close to the rear property line the neighboring structure is, it's essentially deep from the property line, so expansion outward would also be an undesirable impact on the neighborhood, at least expansion outward at the scale of creating bedrooms. So, um, you know, putting them up was the most feasible, uh, the feasible way to do it. Um, and given the, you know, the structural system that exists there, again, it had to be reconstructed. Any variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with the surrounding properties. What the answer that? Yeah, so it's going to be more in scale with what exists in the neighborhood after the change than it is right now. And uh, granted, the app variance will not have a reasonably adverse effect on the national environment. And part of the renovation, the house is going to get a more efficient mechanical system and insulation upgrades, so it actually will be better environmentally than. Uh, what is this say? And it's not in the flood zone. It's not a flood zone. So, I'm going to go back to the questions. 
Now, right now, is it is there any part of the home? Because we've had some other folks that have come before us with um, issues of the home, like roofs that may be leaking or built on top of another roof that's in mold condition, or there's utilities that need to be upgraded, or there's fire access for safety issues, or hallways that we've had in basements that are pretty much unwalkable. Do any of these exist in this current structure? Well, there's the only access to what the roof space now is through a, a hatch. I'm asking more safety concerns so, or well, environmental the, things. Like the entire that. house is going to get renovated, so right now there's a stair to the basement with winders that don't meet current code. So um, the house is going to have new stairways in it that will meet the current code. Um, you know, all bedrooms are going to have egress windows that meet the current code. So part of this renovation will be bringing the entire structure up to the current code. Does that address your question? It, it does. So there's really no major concerns as to why they need to renovate. They're just addressing some concerns along the way with the renovation. That's right. They, they're addressing some current concerns with the renovation. They're um, you know, uh, creating better bedrooms, standing and you're also dealing with the downstairs bedroom. That's right, and we're, we're improving the safety of the downstairs bedroom that exists. Did you um, happen to look at, at alternatives for, for the egress? Did you, did you look at going back to the back of the house uh, and putting it in the middle of the And if, if you so, what was the reasoning for not doing that? Uh, well, along the back of the house, there was um, existing mechanical penetrations in the foundation there was the, the waistline goes out in the back. But um, we also were looking to use the back where um, to create that mudroom addition in a compliant way where we could meet all the current setbacks and so that sort of precluded the well with being there. Uh, For the most part the bedroom kind of exists in the corner of the house now that it had before. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm just kind of looking at, at where, where the mudroom is. It looks to me that to the left of that, you still have plenty of room to put an egress. Um, and I may be wrong. That's why I'm asking the question. So it may be possible to put it there. Right now, that space is not within the bedroom. Um, there's a mechanical closet. Uh, but you don't actually have to have the egress in the bedroom as long as it's down in the basement. Is that correct? Or no, it has to be within the, the bedroom, bedroom itself. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. That answer for and as far as going out back there, is this septic or sewer? This is sewer, I believe. So you're not impeding any nature or anything? Right. third 
request, which it says to extension of the front end two feet closer? Yes. So That's you right. are going two feet in, in response to the chairman's question? That's right, yes. We'd like to extend two feet further just into over the steps. steps. Over steps that exist in that setback. And that's a new. No, it's in the existing footprint. Right. Let me see if I can clear this up. <laughs> <laughs> Not usually my forte, but let me see if I can clear this up. The requested EVE extension doesn't protrude any further than the existing steps. Correct. That's correct. Towards the street. That's right. No wider. Nor wider. That's right. However, with the renovations, the step are the steps widening a little bit. I uh, know the steps are not the steps the same, are not same size. Okay. Yeah, just so rebuild. all he's asking for is right now the eve line goes straight across. He's asking for a two foot bump out or a foot bump, two foot two bump feet. out. Yeah. Just over the steps to shed water off the steps, not any further towards the road. And I guess it's the board's the, prerogative right. to determine whether or not they feel that exceeds what's reasonable. So we're uh, not. Yeah. But but nothing is coming any closer to the road than the closest point of the structure now, which is the steps. That's right. That eave extension will still be further from the road than the bottom step as it exists right now. And it's just a I should know the answer, but I'm gonna pause it. Steps are they traditionally considered part of the structure or are they separate from that? It depends on the town. Some towns expressly don't consider them as part of the structure. And in fact, in our recent workshops in Higgins Beach, um, on that rework um, of the ordinance there, um, the, the zoning there, um, there is actually a proposal that is in keeping with many other communities where stoops and porches can exist within the setback area because they're not considered part of the building property. I, I've never been exposed to that situation, but it seems like it could be reasonable. Um, what we consider as part of the structure, the steps are considered part of the structure. If it's steps like are needed, yeah, if they're needed to exist inside the setback, we have often approved landscaping materials like stacked uh, granite blocks, dry stacked granite, granite blocks can exist in the setback something that's built and attached to the house came on. Okay. So there's a way <laughs> not always not always the best option, but um, so the long story short is that yes, we consider steps as part of the structure and they need to be set back. All, except for in the case of an accessibility um, ADA accessibility issue. For example, a ramp that needs to be added and the only way that you can get the proper slope and distance is to put it in the setback and we can make allowance for that. Um, other questions from the board? I've got one, Mr. Chair. Normally I don't struggle with this question, but I'm struggling with it a little bit tonight. Question one, the need for the variance is to the unique circumstances of the property, not the general conditions of the neighborhood. What that means is that this particular property has something on it that makes it more difficult to work around than any of the ones around it. And I'm not seeing that. So if you could help me with that. If there was a chunk of ledge that came up in the middle of this and nobody else has it, and you've got to change the way you build because of that, I understand. But I'm looking at, they're all pretty uniform, they're all about the same size. What's unique about this property that you have an issue as compared to the other properties around it? Well, what's unique about this property is, is I think this lot is quite a bit smaller than, than the neighbors. You know, at 5,000 square feet. Um, Do you have numbers on the properties around it? I don't have numbers. Okay. You have on the right-hand side 193 frontage, and on the left-hand side 69, 62, which is about the same size. And the one to the left looks like 62? Yes. Yeah, and the one to the rear is kind of bridges the three. Um, but that, at 5,000 square feet and 20% and coverage, uh, that gives us a thousand square feet to work with, and the existing footprint is is seven hundred and fourteen. Um, Would the property to the left be any different than that? The property to the left is um, I don't know offhand, 
I know you didn't see it, but I uh, studied that as part of the property to the left was constructed, I think, well, I would guess by the location of it, it was constructed after the current zoning is passed, which this one was constructed before uh, the current zoning, but the property to the left may have been built after the current zoning, and maybe in more, it's obviously a more modern structure. Property to the left is more modern. The property to the left is more modern, although this lot um, would be difficult to build in the conforming location. We'd be within 18 feet of the house to the rear. Um, you can see on the site plan this cross patched mm -hmm. line you know, within a foot of our property line that is the existing house to the rear. In the garage to the right, same condition. The garage to the right exists. Uh, you know, right on the property. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. So the conforming location um, sort of provides some difficulties in its relationship to other existing structures. What is inter what's interesting to me tied to that is that the property to the back and the property to the right both infringe on this property, whereas this property doesn't infringe on the Right, right. Um, which I think is a so I guess you could say that's a unique circumstance yeah. to this particular property. I, I, I also believe that uh, from looking at the one on the left there, it, it appears to be back in the, in the envelope. Mm -hmm. uh, this one was obviously built before there was an envelope, and it's, it's well outside of that envelope. So it, it, to, to get it more conforming, you pretty much have to tear the house down and start over and moving everything back. Okay, I think, I think that helps me. Thank you. Other questions from the board? Start on the uh, planning fact and uh, Terms the board has that um, we want to discuss it. You look perplexed, so I'm just looking. <laughs> no, there's just one question I'm struggling with, and I need to ask it. One of the funding the back from both of the questions. <coughs> um, these are the variances due to the unique circumstances of the property, not to the general condition of Zach and Edward. And I'll just open it up to the board as they choose to discuss their points on it. I'll, I'll just reiterate what I said. I think finding the fact, based on what we just discussed, is the property to the rear has a structure that's almost on this property line. The property to the right has a garage structure that's almost on the property line. So unique to this situation is that the, it squeezes, both from a visual and a physical standpoint, it squeezes the envelope on this particular property and wouldn't make it comfortable to expand out any further than they have. Uh, I'll follow up with it. I'm making an assumption based on a small snapshot, but I'm going to guess is I'm probably right. It looks like this home was built prior to the setback requirements, whereas the homes on the left looks like it might have been built after the setback requirements. That's not accurate. Sure. Yeah, um, that does look like it's sitting in the envelope um, as opposed to this one here. So I think that also kind of defines the difference. So it's fine. Any other questions or uh, comments? Fact on number one. Number two, the variant of variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use or fair market value of the flooding properties. And again, I'll open one of these to the board. I, I think in this case, I would have to say it's probably going to increase the values of the other properties. It makes it much more conforming. It, it's going to look more like the, uh, the other properties around it, uh, being more the same size, the same shape. I, I see nothing detrimental uh, in, in, that, in that regard. Yeah, I, I do like the fact that the applicant had stated that they're pondering the driveway to kind of separate that a little bit from the people that are right there. Now, by doing that, you may create a snow removal issue yourself by doing that because it looks like it's combined now, but on the opposite side of the right call. Yeah, but I mean, I'm. It's good that you're looking at that because I mean it is. It's basically one drive one. And the, uh, the deck is coming off, which is any other one. It's my call to mimic. We'll just start the Crockett's. In addition, uh, if anything, uh, this home being old and outdated as it is has the potential of devaluating the current property, uh, matching the current property surrounding it. I agree with what's also been said, and I think by adding the uh, egress in the basement, making the house more safer from an escape 
uh, standpoint, it adds value as well. And that's not designed as a, as a second. It's not, I noticed the layout, it doesn't look like it's designed at all as a efficiency department or anything. It's not an additional unit, not access to it is only through the, the main living space. And practical difficulty is only result of the taken by the applicant prior owner. I think it's clear that this happened as a result of the, the change that, that we made, not them. And then if he's in the law, I'm No, as the sheriff pointed out, the property right next to it, you can see in, inside of the envelope. So it's just better. It's relatively small on the second floor. Uh, it wouldn't be unreasonable to have one dead or not there. Um, but does it, does it change? But anything? it's, um, you know, there's. So there would be no other feasible alternative to, to my client, who's the applicant, because this is sort of a project that's within the scope of her needs. She can't afford a bigger four-bedroom house elsewhere. You know, she wants to be here, and um, you know, this is sort of a project that fits her ability to follow it through financially. Outside the envelope of the existing home. But since they went straight up in the same envelope, I had less of an issue with it. If they were trying to uh, push the envelope by taking up more plan space, then I think I'd have a problem with it. But again, they reduced the envelope by taking the deck, shifting it to the back, and putting it in the billable area. The only thing that really is outside is the change in the front entrance, where they want to take the eave and stick it out another two feet. And less issue with that if they tried to go the whole front line of the property uh, of the building. I think I'd have an issue, but it's just to cover the stairs. I think that's being reasonable. Taking the footprint going straight up, I think that's very reasonable. And now they're getting egress on the left to get people out of the basement from a safety reason standpoint. It makes sense to me. I think I can all that. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I think it's fine. Well and they're well within the within the max. Right. This is so. So, it is so we don't care about so if this had come forward to us as one bedroom upstairs but they later on decided to put a wall up and make two bedrooms wouldn't have known they come, did come forward to you for the building permit probably but moving on <laughs> but practically if they did it right it comes to you I mean, yes. but you wouldn't be it right. right so if we built if we approve this with one bedroom on third second floor and two or three, five years from now, another, not that you're not going to stay, but another go to the fourth and opposite. We reckon this. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think, Mr. Chair, I don't think I'm even looking at it from the one bed, one less bedroom. It, it's, it's been stated that it's the applicant's desire to have this for family, to have the four bedrooms. Everything could be done without having four bedrooms without coming before us. That's where I'm struggling. Because there is a feasible alternative. You can still have three bedrooms. You can still get that address in. You can still house family that comes and visits. That's where I'm really struggling with it. I'm not even saying one bedroom or two bedroom going up. I'm just saying everything could be fixed without having to do that. But if you were looking at the tie to that question from a financial point of view, um, going up all these less expensive and you don't have to give us exact numbers, ballpark wise. If if you're looking at doing the same project as a single story, and the cost would be well, relatively about cost. So in the single story structure, your costs are multiplied. Uh, if you imagine you've got a foundation and a roof that are covering your living space, so in a two story structure, the foundation and the roof cover twice as much living space as a one story structure. So the one-story structure sprawls, you're purchasing twice as much foundation and twice as much roof to cover the same living area that you could accommodate in a one-story, uh, in a two-story structure. So a 30-40%? Yes. Yeah, easily. Yeah. Well, and, and in this specific case, you would have the benefit of the resource efficiency of saving the foundation that's there in the first floor structure that exists. And they feasibly could go back, but again, it comes back to the same issues of we want that. I mean, they could expand out in the envelope. But they can't expand more than 3%. 3%. 
Oh, they're at seven percent right now. So what's three percent going to get you? It's no. not going to get you anything. You're right. eating up more area. I think we were. Uh, Mr. Brock makes a good point. Though. You, know, you currently have three bedrooms. You could rehab the house. You could remodel it. You could reappoint it. You could do all that stuff and not require any variance at all. The only thing that would require a variance, I think we've established, is the egress well. Obviously, this project enlarges the living area, opens up the kitchen, and does some other things that make, maybe make the, the house more livable um, and, and allow maybe more people to be there. But that's really the question. But then again, we're not talking about the hardship. We're talking about practical difficulty. If the desire is to add a bedroom, how can you add a bedroom feasibly? Is there a feasible way to add a bedroom? It's not, it's not really so much a matter of do you need the bedroom. It's a matter of how can you do it feasibly, as opposed to a parent. As opposed to as opposed to a new hardship. This is practical. This is right. Yeah. Which is why I say this. Yeah, but, but it's a valid point. If we were to track the size of houses from when this was built until now, you know, in the 60s and the 70s, you had a family of three and a 1,200 square foot house. Now you have a family of one and a half and a 2,500 square foot house. Still this house is still <laughs> substantially smaller than what the current real estate market would expect for it. That's my thought, too, is that it's 714 square feet, let's face it, that it's the size of most living rooms we built. This is just, it's, it doesn't seem feasible to me that one and a half kids in that 700, and, was it 14, 714 the square feet? The footprint of the existing house is 714 square feet. Yeah, which is, to me, is... It's so small, so, I mean, if you have a parent and two kids in there, you, it would be, it would be very confining. And I, and I also think that the boards, we've, we've, we've approved these time and time again, month after month, these things, he's, he's met, he's worked within the foundation, he's actually removed the debt, increased the back, I think he's done everything that we've consistently voted to pay with on in the past. Even above and beyond, I think he's he's worked hard to keep it all. He has expanded the footprint, he's decreased the footprint, and again, 715 square feet. That is that's by any way that's a studio. I so have a little design living room bigger than this in this house. Huh? So Mr. Longstaff made a comment. Maybe I'm interpreting this wrong. Then are we not even as a board supposed to consider? that fourth bedroom because we're just considering if they are adding the fourth bedroom, can they do it feasibly other than the way that they're doing it? So I'm, I'm looking at it like why would, that you may not need a fourth bedroom and you're saying that really we shouldn't even be considering that. We well, I'm not saying you shouldn't consider it, but I think you have to go back to the, the criteria, the new criteria, refer to that. Is there, is there any criteria that you can say uh, the applicant doesn't have any right to a fourth bedroom. I mean, is that in there? No, if it was a septic system, you might have an issue. That's why I asked the question. I'm not, I'm not for or against. I'm just simply saying, if, if the request is, is, I mean, it would be one thing if they wanted to expand the footprint and do all kinds of stuff. Uh, then all of that other, all of those other impediments come back into play. I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, this is a practical difficulty variance. What you're trying to determine is there any other feasible alternative rather than to grant the variance to them for them to do what if, if the request is reasonable, then is there any other alternative other than variance that will allow them to do it? So if they wanted the fourth bedroom per se, let's let's and they went back just let's say just say per se they put the fourth bedroom where the mudroom is. They probably wouldn't have to come before us. That wouldn't meet the uh, legal, the code minimum size for a bedroom. The need for the variance, yeah. what, I mean, let's start right from the beginning. The need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property, not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. What are the unique circumstances of the property? You already had a discussion about the size of the property versus the properties next to it. Is, it's your job to determine is, is the property unique or is it not? Okay. That has nothing to do with whether or not they, they should have a fourth bedroom or not. It's, is the property unique or not? The granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood. 
Would a fourth bedroom produce an undesirable change in the neighborhood? It's your job to determine whether that is true or not. Okay. Uh, the practical difficulty is not the result of the action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. That's the one that I think everybody trips up on. I, I've never heard a good argument for that one. <laughs> so if I, if I was sitting on the board, which I'm not, uh, I would really be pounding on that one. <laughs> But I, I am only here to. <laughs> we'll talk about that. Yeah. Um, so, so I mean, how, how is this not an action or a result of action taken by the owner? I can't answer that. So that's your job. Means why they pay you the big bucks. Um, then the fourth one: no other feasible alternative is available to the applicant except the variance. If if the if the request is for that fourth bedroom or the, for that second story expansion, is there any other alternative available to the app? That's what you guys need to tease up. Feasible, it's a feasible alternative. And, you know, the granting of the variance, bringing of an applicant's property more nearly in conformance, I think Mr. Uh, Hoken talked about other properties in the neighborhood being, and I think the pictures even showed several, two sort of two story, one house range. Like range. Yeah, very few ranches in that neighborhood. So I think there's a reasonable argument there that, you know, that can be made. Um, you know, I don't think there's any adverse effect on the natural environment. That's my opinion. I'm not forcing that one on you at all. Um, and it's not in the flood zone or the shoreline zone. So really, to me, it all gets down to the number three and number four. You know, those are, and, and Mr. Loisel, Number one in this case, because there, you do have to determine if this is something that's unique to this property. It's not really a matter of whether or not they deserve to have a fourth bedroom. It's a matter of how can the request be done without the variance. And if I'm not, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, the charrettes that were done. This is a classic example of if the town is moving in the direction that they're talking about. This would be something that wouldn't have to come to the board in the future. Do you have the uh, the uh, summary statement uh, that goes along with that. I, I, I think it's an R2 zone. I just don't have anything in front of me. That, was this in an R2 zone? Kevin, do you remember? I'm checking yes. the, yeah. I think R2, it is. Okay, thank you. So, so there's yes. another thing. R2, you know, the minimum lot size in an R2 zone is 20,000 square feet. You're dealing with 5,000? 5,000. <laughs> and again, uh, I'm the zoning administrator, but I would question why in the world that neighborhood is zoned R2. Because most of the lots are no, nowhere near 20,000 square feet. Yeah, R8. Yeah, yeah, at least R4. <laughs> but, so, so, you know, there's kind of an argument or a point of debate. It's an R2 zone, which is supposed to give you 20,000 square feet to deal with, in which case you can expand backwards into the envelope until kingdom come, do I need four area ratio yeah, have to work with six, it? seven bedrooms, easy. <laughs> but but because of that five thousand square foot limit, that the only the only way you can do any kind of expansion to your home, which most people would enjoy the ability to do if you lived in other districts, perhaps, is to go up. <laughs> and you know, I think Mr. Uh, Mr. Stark pointed out they they've done, or maybe it was. They, they've done everything that we usually look at. Are they, are they staying within the envelope of the existing house? Are they popping out of it? I mean, so so those are the points that you make. I'm not saying so more of this. <laughs> but I'm only just trying to, I'm trying to, to come back and read. But no, I think it's right important. Here. I think it ties it back. Thank you. And, and this is not for or against, just pointing out the points that, that you need to ponder. And every board member still can have their own views. That's what this is all about. Is that, that you know, I, I understand Mr. Carpenter's concern is consistent with that. He's always been consistent with that. And consistency to me is more important than anything. So I have no problem with that. Uh, his issue there. I am okay with it. I, I, I tend to, to, to tell you. If I could, I, I think the, the, the way to come back to that three bedroom question, which I think is a valid question, is you tie that back to is, is this a self created hardship? Is this action taken by the applicant? You know, that's where that ties in. We don't want to go there. <laughs> well, like, no, it's not. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it is. It, it is. is. It yeah. is an action that the applicant is taking. So I think, I think that's what I think. 
this, but I was going back to four to go to three. But to me, to me, the definition of it, and I'll, I'll, I'll try to school the expert. Uh, <laughs> Who's the expert? <laughs> uh, I'll give you it all day long. Uh, the practical difficulty is not reasonable and actually taken by the applicant prior owner. To me, uh, it would be a negative. In other words, I interpret that as meaning that they did something stupid. <laughs> and they deserve what they got. That's an interesting thing. <laughs> so that's how I've looked at it for the last 18 years. Is <laughs> they do something stupid. Nah, they didn't. I feel like they have more kids, but they don't have work. <laughs> so I, and I mean it sincerely. I mean, that's how I look at it is, is did they create something that, why did you do that? Well, to Mr. Long's best point, for houses like this, where they are, you don't see very many that do have a base, better than the base. Um, but that back then was not an issue. The, the requirement for the, the, the egress was 1976. My father had bedrooms in the chicken too. <laughs> had seven kids. <laughs> so I mean, I think realistically, that's again, if you look at that issue specifically, um, you know, the the current coding, the free current codes do require that. In fact, I don't know when that. I think I want to say it was the seventies that they put that in. in is that Polka? Yeah, yeah, it would have happened sometime, probably so. So, so I think it's a Polka call, if I remember correctly. Yeah, we just put this house was on the left. It was a house that was in it. I think they just, well, obviously it was done well enough that it didn't require, it could be, it could handle without water damage. Yeah. Or, 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 you couldn't put it under my face. <laughs> so, um, coming back to that issue, uh, I, do you want to list a finding fact that is contrary, which is fine? Or do you want to leave it as what we talked about? Or how would you like to proceed with your, your position on that, on that specific item on the whole? Not feasible term. I, I think I've expressed my opinion, and there's been ample discussion. I don't think we need to labor anymore. Uh, okay, you're actually don't look at the applicant's property when you yield into performance with the surrounding properties. I, I think uh, Ms. Long said did a very good job explaining that. Uh, anybody have anything they'd like to add to that? Yeah, I think the applicant talked about the Type of structures that surround this particular one and raising more compliance. Uh, and anybody else wish to add anything more than that? I, I, I don't usually have a problem with that item. Um, the Granite Branch will not uh, have an unreasonable interest on the environment. Uh, I kind of chuckle about the fact that, yeah, it's going to be less, yeah, it'll be tighter, so I guess. Yeah. It'll consume less, less fuel, fuel, more fuel, more so I guess you, I, I see that as a selling name. Especially with the fact that it did, uh, the DEP wouldn't allow it anyway, so it becomes almost to the point. And that's probably is in the zone. Um, so that's kind of where I'm standing. Uh, anybody wish to add anything else? Where is my point of concern? Uh, I personally think that uh, this is consistent with what we've done. I think the question that uh, is always a fair question is a feasible alternative. There are alternatives. I don't believe that feasible. Um, and I guess my fees, my definition of feasible would be cost and cost efficiency. And you could see the one floor, but uh, it could be a no go. I would, when you're looking at it from a practical point of view, it's going to cost uh, $200,000 to the model list, and it's going to cost two fifty dollars if you go up, because you're only adding eight feet of wall around. It doesn't make sense to do that. It would be hard to justify a cost without you know, expanding the space, in my opinion. So I would try that as a point. Yeah. yeah. Remind folks that the practical difficulty in this case in is a case for strict application of the dimensional standards of the ordinance to the property for which a variance is sought would both preclude a use of the property, which is permitted in the zone, and therefore you know, an extra bedroom is a permitted use for residents. Look at it that way, and, and and also would result in significant economic injury to the app. And I think, uh, personally, I believe drop, not allowing that second floor is definitely the economic injury to the point where if it be personally, obviously you can't get on the personal judgment, but uh, I mean, personally, I think that to me this is a math equation like anything, does it make financial sense? We're better off to sell the bond, and if it you know, I want to stay here financially. I can't see that it would be sound to stay at some feet per feet. 
and not go up three stories. Um, the, the only counter argument to that that could be made is that she just purchased the property. Uh, they voted in 2013, they bought it. So, yes, but, but, so you bought it as a three bedroom ranch. The argument could be on that time back to year number three, which is correct the reason I'm going to take by the applicant or owner. Um, which is difficult to keep us here longer. Um, Let's not go that way. I, I, don't, I don't consider that stupid. I think they bought a property and they decided they want to improve it. And so, again, I, I, maybe that standard is not 